to Sisters Reading Romance. This is Aisha, one half of this podcast. This is Lexi, the other half of this podcast. And this is the last week of September. And this is probably the most accurate book for the theme that we picked for September. Well, this is what I was going for. And then you're like, no. Let's do Although I'm glad that we situated this as the last book of the month because it, it's a perfect segue into October. Um, so this week we did Noctacadia by Carrie Lake. For the longest time I was calling it Noctadia, but That's it's what I call Noctacadia because it. it's Noctosomia. Um, and oh my God, speaking of mispronunciations this whole time i'm pretty sure we were calling um it elise silver it's elsie this her her name is elsie this yeah. whole time like every episode since we've done her book we've if we've ever referred to her we've pre- referred to her as El- oh. elise and it's elsie we're just i thought i was calling her elsie no we've been calling her elise oh, well So we don't fuck that up. Yeah. Apparently nobody corrected us, but I hope she listened to the episode and realized that we like called her by the wrong name, like every fucking time, but it's Elsie silver. So sorry for getting that wrong. Everybody, especially Elsie, because we loved your book. Um, so anyway, this week we did knock, knock to Cadia by Carrie Lake. And it is, a dark academia. Yeah. Um, okay, let's dive into a trope. So bes- dark academia is one. Teacher, student. Yeah. Age gap. Yeah. It's She's 20 and he's 30. I think she's a... Ooh, he's 35. Tw- no, because she... Because remember she asked for a glass of... Like, to drink the whiskey. And he's like, are you even legal? And she's like, in four weeks. And he's like... I guess so she's like yeah like a baby when he's 35 he said that he was yeah I remember working it out of my head or maybe he's just just younger than that like in his early 30s because he was 17 when his brother was taken and it's been like 10 years since or something like he's he's significantly older than she is but he's not quite graying I think he's I thought he was in his 30s like he's in his 30s I thought she was older no no, oh, she's like at least 22. No, she's 20. Because I remember noting being like, oh, like I also pictured her being um, 24. Like, but then it makes sense because she's a sophomore. This is a university, though. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so this... sophomore and then junior would be third year. Yeah, so she's, so she's a sophomore. More. I wouldn't she be a freshman because she's never been to university. Technically, yes, but she her age would put her as a sophomore because that that's a thing that they say in the book. She's like, oh, I'm a sophomore, but I'm taking freshman classes because I skipped a yeah. year or something like that. Okay, so dark academia. Uh, yeah, teacher, student, age gap for sure. I have morally gray hero. Yeah, he just casually, slowly murders someone in this book, and we'll we'll talk about that. Like, I think like that'll be a talking point at this at some point. But like, he reminded me very much of um the hero from Marrow. What's his name? But doesn't he like kind of where he's just like casually a murderer, like less less of a Jack. Psycho. Jack. Yeah, he's less of a psycho for sure. Like Deverick is less of a psycho, but that's but how you like, pronounce his name. Fuck. I don't yeah, know how to pronounce anyone's name in the book. Although I was gonna ask you how you pronounced his brother's name. Camden, Caden, Cademun. Because I kept when they shortened it to, to I kept calling him Cade, which is because it's C A E D M O N, and I was like Cademun. That sounds like a weird name. I, but then I pictured it when he shortened it to. He's like C A E D. I I in my head pronounce it as Cade. Okay, let's stick with tropes first. So age gap, morally great hero. I have like I'd burn the world for you. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? College romance? Is that even? Does it count? Women in it? STEM. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is that a it? good one. Oh, it's. Mm, 
gothic. Would you consider this horror? Kind there of. There are horror elements there in it, There are yeah. horror elements for sure. Like, I wouldn't say suspense, but I would say horror. There are horror elements in it, yeah. Cadman? Let's put this in Google. Were they shortening it to CAD or were they shortening it to Cade? Cademan. That's what Google is saying, Cademan. Okay. So that's what I was saying in my head then. Because then I was saying when they shortened it, they were, they're shortening it to Cade. Cademan. Yeah. Cademan. Okay, yeah. So that's that's what I had in my head then. Okay, so I was pronouncing that right in my head. Um, okay, do you have any other tropes? Bad dads. <sighs> this is like... <laughs> that does seem to be such a theme. Not only does she... Ha- does he have a bad dad? She has she a bad dad. She also turns out to have a bad dad. Yeah. And then she's a bad stepdad. Yeah, but you wouldn't consider this romance slow slow burn either. No, I think it's a, mm, yeah. no probably slow burn. Would you? Yeah, they have sex at like us the fifty percent mark, maybe just before the fifty percent mark. Yeah, but he's just like it's sex. They're not in a relationship. I don't know. I don't think I'd call this slow burn. All right, um, well, you do you. Forbidden romance. Yeah. Okay. Trigger warnings. Um, I have like graphic, graphic like murder, murder multiple worms. times. The worms, worms. I honestly got nightmares. So I read when I first sat down to read the book. I read the first twenty percent in one go, and that night I read it like in the evening when I was going to bed. And that night I had a nightmare about those fucking black worms. I think like they the were most creepy. scary part was it was like it wasn't like her. Like, cause they like in graphic detail explain how her mother dies of these worms, like eating her alive, basically. And then they come out of her mouth. Oh, and it's like, it's but really I think good. like the it's scariest like- part is when he's doing the autopsy on that other lady. Yeah. And the worm comes out and like lunges for him, and then bites his finger. It's very alien. Yeah, and it's then very he's, alien. Like, <laughs> the thing that like was like shocking because he was like. Ah. Like, what the it fuck? It bit me. It bit me. And then he was just, like, unbothered by the fact that this, like, him. worm bit him. It was, I like, he be... was, like, when did they develop teeth? And it's just, like, I would be I like, that's your, your, your first worry. Am I going to be infected with something now? Yeah, I thought he was going to be infected. And that's what I thought, too. Yeah, I was, like, oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah, the worms were fucking creepy. And the, the, the creepiest part, like, this book is very graphic and murder. Attempted rape. Yeah. It's there's also the talk of like accusing of rape or like the potential for something like that to happen. Um, I would look up the trigger warnings because there's like there's like quite a few. Like this would borderline on dark romance. Yeah, but I guess that's what dark. Oh academia yeah, also is. A, I don't know if this is a trope, but this is like disability representation because he. He has whatever his what was the illness. Oh, it's a made up illness, but but technically he's an illness. Yeah, he has a chronic illness. Yeah, I guess that's true. Oh, fuck, I keep touching. Yeah, I we look at the trigger warnings for this one because yeah, like attempted rape, graphic murder. There's like a lot of talk of murder. There's a lot of talk of torture. Yeah, there's quite a bit of I'm going to kill you or like oh yeah, we'll just kill him or. Everything can be solved by murder. It, Yeah. And like very casually in this book. Like he. And the thing is. Okay. So he murders. He casually just murders this one guy throughout the first 60 percent. At least the first 50. Maybe just before 50. And he like how he gets him because he, he's he's basically doing like a human experiment on him. Pretty much. Yeah. And he just he, he happens because what be, he needs is he needs to harvest live of the toxin the worms produce yeah so but he needs the worms to have adapted to humans specifically so he could harvest the toxins that have been produced by a worm that is adapted to humans yes anatomy so he basically purposely infects a guy and then just watches the infection like infection take place and like watches this parasite just like eat this guy from the inside out yeah. basically. Okay. Also there's it this was one fucking creepy. <laughs> one scene. The the worms make you like super horny. 
And yeah. so he's just sitting there like just straight jacking up off. Jacking off. And you're just like, what? Like, what is going on? Okay, wait, on? let's backtrack and let me read that. Let me do the Goodreads thing and then we'll continue. Uh, okay, so this is a Goodreads score of 3.4.34 with about 5,000 ratings, which is like, I would say that's an accurate rating, but that's not as many ratings as I thought there would be. Like, I thought there'd be more ratings. This also came out in April of this year. So maybe that's a lot of ratings for April of this year. But, um... Yeah, we haven't even hit spooky season. Yeah. This is a good October read, for sure. This is spooky season. Okay, let me read the back of the book. A dark, atmospheric tale of deadly secrets and forbidden love. The dead teach the living. After watching my mother succumb to a mystery illness, I promised myself two things. I'd find the cure for what ravaged her and leave the godforsaken city where she abandoned me. Four years later, I received an acceptance letter from Dracadia University, one of the oldest, most prestigious schools in the country. Nestled on a secluded island off the coast of Maine, it's rumored to be haunted by the souls of the mental patients exiled there centuries before. Those who bo- whose bones are said to make up the island's white, sandy shores. And restless ghosts aren't even the most daunting pecu- peculiarity. Deverick Bramwell, also known as campus, known on campus as Dr. Death, is a brilliant pathologist in charge of the Midnight Lab. He's also my devastatingly handsome professor who seems to loathe tenacious first years like me. Except his dark... E- and egnum egg and do you want to read <laughs> enigmatic gaze tells tells me all the ways he'd devour me if given the chance and his stolen kisses burn my lips with forbidden jealousy i crave his authority he aches for redemption together we're toxic delicious fodder for the prying eyes hellbent on exhuming the rotted skeletons of our past for the dead have much to teach, and it's only a matter of time before Dracadia's most depraved secret is resurrected. So, yeah, that says a lot, but not a lot at all. I That gives the general vibe of the book, though. Mm-hmm. But doesn't actually tell you anything about what happens in the book. Yeah. Just gives you the vibe. Vibes yeah. only. Vibes only. <laughs> and that. Um... Okay, so Lila. Yeah. And Deverick. Yes. And Deverick is a pathologist, and Lila is a student, and her mom gets infected by these worms. Because her mom was. Twice. Yeah. Her and mom beats was... the first one. Well, I don't think the strain. It's the rocks thing, that rock, that black rock. Yeah. Which is. Okay. We'll, we'll that prevents it. But, like. She basically was immune as a kid, but she was in the study as a as a young adult, as a young like almost like like she was like twenty at college, yeah. And basically, they were trying to figure out a cure for diabetes, yeah, autoimmune diseases. And it was all women that was in the study. Yeah, it was a little. Oh, they did explain that. They said that the the virus, for whatever reason, um. Like it, its symptoms or something like that were like more it like transmitted, transmitted more likely to women or something. Like there was a reason the virus specifically liked women, or the the parasite. Sorry, like but that was a thing. They like basically injected these women with these worms, but she was a which, local. Which you find you find you know as a reader that they've been injected with these worms and you like basically piece together that they were except the study wasn't related to the like they shouldn't have been injected with the worms so you're like who how did this happen yeah and you think that his dad was the one who basically like fucking killed these women but it actually it actually wasn't it wasn't it was his because- dad was actually he it was, was an the- asshole but he wasn't a, a murderous asshole it was he was just an the asshole dean who at the time was a researcher as well. And he got her pregnant. Mm-hmm. Did he? He got her, basically, he got her mom pregnant. To, he was married. Yeah. And he was, he, he married into a wealthy family that included him in this, like, um, secret society called the Rooks. Yeah. 
I lost. The Secret Society did absolutely fucking nothing too. Like, I, yeah, I do want to talk about the ending with that because I, yeah, it's an interesting one. But basically, you find out through the whole book. Sorry for spoilers. If you don't want to be spoiled, then you You're should. You're listening to the wrong fucking podcast. Yeah, but basically, her her quote unquote dad gets her mom pregnant, tells her mom to abort it because he is a wife and he doesn't want his wife to leave him because if his wife leaves him, he he's fucked. No he's gonna be he's gonna have no money. He's gonna be kicked out of this like secret society because the society is for the rich and privileged and he would then not be rich or privileged. privileged yeah. So he tells her to abort it. She says no, or she says, okay. And then just disappears into the night, like just fucking disappears. Yeah. And he, he disappears. She disappears. And then around the same time that she leaves the study and just disappears because now she's pregnant and they're like, we can't include you in the study. There's, Eight of them, six of the women drown themselves in the lake. Yeah. Like they just, it's a, like it's, it's a mass suicide. Yeah. Basically. And then two of them, which who happen, are locals, who happen to be locals, beat the like the virus, the, the virus and just disappear. And they disappear because they thought that the people in this study were trying to kill them. Yeah. So they went into hiding. And then basically her mom lives this whole other life under a different name in like a city like across the river or the ocean or whatever like they're on an island and then she comes back to the island for her mother's funeral and confronts her like lila's by like dad biological dad and then he infects her with the worms again and this time she dies because the first time the locals were safe because they were drinking this tea that was made out of like this These, rock like, specifics like rock salt basically that was like harvested off the coast yeah it was harvested in this in the like town like locally in the town and that was the only for whatever reason it like basically made them immune to yeah. the to the infection so then they were fine but then that's why the other one committed suicide and you find out that the dean of the school is the ultimate villain of this whole fucking thing because he sabotaged the experiment because he got somebody he got one of her girls pregnant no 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 and then no the reason he it was sabotage because he was, was trying to sell the the thing he, he was, was trying to get he the, was trying to sell it but also because the dad not not kicked him off no his the dev how do yeah, Deverick. Like Deverick's dad, dad got his wife pregnant. Yeah, and then he was like just vindictive, and he was like, "Well, not only did you kick me off the study because I got another girl pregnant, but you fucked my wife." So and fuck then his you. Only son is, is, is not his. It's not his. So then he's like, "Well, fuck you," and he sabotages the study and changes the injections from instead of it being the toxin, it's the actual worms. And then all the women die. And then the whole thing is like a disgrace to like the thing. His Deverick's dad gets blamed in the process. The because he gets kicked off this because the dean got kicked off the study. He was like, well, I want the results because I'm going to actually sell this in like the black market and make a lot of money. And that was the plan all along. But now that I'm not in the study, I can't take any of the research because I'm not I'm not there to see any of it. So then he kidnaps one of. De- Deverick's twin yeah and ho- well, it's supposed to basically ransom ransom it with his dad except his dad's just an asshole and it's like no, this is can- my life's work I don't give a fuck I don't give a fuck about this kid so then he ends up being like well okay fuck you then and he sells the kid like sells Deverick's twin his dad's other son into like some other fucking society as like basically human traffics him yeah and it's like the whole plot is like weirdly connected together based on this one motherfucker who ends up getting infected anyway and but then he doesn't even succumb to the no he because cam caden cademan cademan kills him before he even gets infected like yeah. enough to actually and i okay let's talk about let's see where where do we want to start do we want to start with 
let's start with the guy that Devrick slowly kills with the, the fucking worms. So he is like the reason he so specifically picks him is this is the driver that delivered. Yeah. So every his, everybody is connected to the kidnapping of his brother, his brother, twin. and who he thinks is dead. Obviously. Yeah. Um. And so he like Nolly's doing this like un sanctioned um human experiment trials yeah uh he's Not also FDA like approved he's human trials. also like if like eliminating the enemies a, yeah of his past and then one of the enemies also happens to be the creepy dude who hangs around angelo which just ends up being it like the thing is is that there's so much of those plot that ties together. Like it's such a, actually such an elaborate plot where like Angela goes into hiding, but he goes into hiding because the C- Cademan kills the rich guy who was his master and basically states in the, the, the guts of this guy, I'm coming for you, Angelo. So then Angelo goes into hiding. Like it's all connected because it's actually Deverick's and, twin that's been murdering um, people. One of Lila? Lila's what? Uh, one of for her stepdad, who's also fucking such he's a fucking just, scrub. He's just an idiot. Like he's honestly he's such just a scrub. An like she's paying for everything. Yeah, basically, he's honestly like the thing is that he's not even a bad guy. He's just he's just an idiot. Like he's quite honestly just an idiot. So basically, <laughs> he's like friends with him and. And they like everyone knows Angelo is into illegal shit. Yeah, she basically told him, but nobody he shouldn't he like do not bring him around because I don't want his trouble coming to our door, coming to here. Also, she's a younger sister. Yeah, who's like what sixteen, sixteen, seventeen at the time of this, she would be sixteen. And then like, (laughs) basically, her sister was like. I think bullied, right? She's like she's bullied so hard. I or think like, she's no, she like A is bullied, and then she like basically because her mom tried to kill her, so she okay, like has so all this like, trauma. So she goes to this like boarding school, school. that specializes in like troubled teens. Yeah, basically. and like and, offers, like, and therapy. The, the, because the stepdad doesn't her stepdad, Bay's mom or Bay's dad, Bay's dad was like. Uh, I don't think she needs a school. I think yeah, mental health is she just needs good friends. Mental health doesn't exist. And <laughs> Lila's like, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. So Angelo ends up being one, but he ends up being Dev- an actual psycho. Devrick gets yeah. to him first because she goes home. Yeah, it just like all ends up working out. Yeah, because she goes like so he like hangs around her place and she went home because she like she got expelled yeah she got expelled because they were in okay wait let's go that's like no let's that's like way at the end okay let's let's start with topics that are closer to the beginning so let's talk about deverick's slow killing of this guy with the worms but she he basically just like whiskey abducts this guy who's an alcoholic gives him whiskey full of like the eggs of these worms Mm-hmm. Which that in itself makes me want to gag. <laughs> like that's so gross. The fact that this guy didn't un- like realize there was like larva in his. I don't know. I mean, maybe they're really small. Like obviously, we don't know. Well, but the thing is, it's like because in the midnight labs, they they're were harvesting. harvesting those eggs. Yes. So they had to be big enough for a bunch of fucking teenagers to be able to yeah, take so tweezers like, to and, like and picking would, them out yeah. of the out of like. So, like, that guy is just, like, didn't give a fuck? I don't know. What I mean, was he was an alcoholic whiskey? going through withdrawal. So, I mean, basically, and then basically Dever keeps this guy. In this, like, in dungeon. In this cell. And just, like, feeds him his four meals a day. But watches him slowly succumb to the worms. Mm-hmm. And, like, I think it's over, like, a span of, like, two, almost three weeks. That he watches this guy. It's looking longer. It's definitely longer than that. Is it? It's like, pre- it's it's long, though. It's longer than, it's definitely longer than that. He makes it past, like, because she becomes, like, a basically a TA at that point, right? Well, or not one of his TAs. Uh, his, lab, his, his rap, a lab, lab assistant. assistant. Because that would be, like, maybe 
October? No, he had just died when she becomes yeah, his lab so like, assistant. What like because four, five it would have been it would have had to be October because this starts in September and it's not close to Christmas yet because she gets expelled in November mm-hmm. because she's registering for her next semester's classes when they expel her. So it would have to be October that he dies. Yeah. So then mm. he just like slowly kills this guy. Slowly kills this guy and just like watching and he's, it like, happen. Telling him the story and it's like the it's basically his his villain origin. This guy story. is like <laughs> there so so Deverick can monologue his like why he's exacting revenge on all these people. Yes, basically because of his brother and how his dad was a fucking dick. <laughs> and his brother's dead and he's sad and he's dying. Yeah, from a and disease. this guy is just like. Uh, I'm hallucinating my kids. And he's like, ah, that's normal. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> it was like, it was kind of a lot. And then, okay, I was, I it didn't clue in to me until the very end when uh, Cademan admits to killing the, the fucking alcoholic guy in the cell. When, when Deverick finds his like eyeballs got, got like, yeah, removed. And, and like him all cut he up. Was, he's like, he was just like, wow, I didn't like, know this. <laughs> he's like, this is a weird symptom. Like, it usually <laughs> doesn't happen like this. He's like, this is odd. He's like, maybe I. He's like, did I give him something sharp? He's yeah. But he's no, like, didn't this he chase him weird. through the? Oh I no, he chased him through the, the tunnels. No, uh, Cademan had been using because they're identical his identity to get in and out of the oh, campus yeah, yeah, yeah. snuck Except into his lab could tell him apart is lila. lila even though i'm pretty sure caveman has like a giant fucking scar on his face does he no know? it's on his body it's like it's like up his neck so oh, like yeah. if you looked at his neck it's like down the back of his neck like along his spine but like but yeah so he basically snuck in killed the guy and then put the rock in his hand because then Deverick is like, that's weird. Also, I thought he was left-handed, but the rocks in his right hand. He's like, that's weird. Okay, whatever. Moving and on. Just continues Time to, like, to harvest, and then just takes the body and dumps it in a giant tank. Yeah, so that he the just worms, has like a body hole, so that the worms can just sl- like just come out of the body. And at one point, he even comments like, he sees the worm coming out of the pant leg, and he's like, oh, it looks like the worms are coming out of the anus now too. And I was like. Oh my god! I was like, I did not need that visual. I was like, that is that just gives me the creeps. I was like, Ugh. I just think worms I in general are just like oh, horrible. I can't. It makes it way, way worse. They just it's, don't need to be near anyone's body. Ugh. It just like grossed me out so much. Um, yeah, I did think this book would be more paranormal, but it actually wasn't paranormal. At well, all. it's kind of like I think you're like. I think both of us probably went into it expecting it to um It did follow similar beats as as uh Gothicana. Because and, like you're always expecting cuz I kind of like towed the line of like you could think everything happening is paranormal but also you can probably try to explain it away. And in Gothicana there were things that went left unexplained. Yeah. Like she didn't wrap everything up in a nice bow. You like had the main plot wrapped up, but then you were like, wait a second, what about the fucking lake? In this book, the plot comes together and everything is tied up. Yeah. In a nice bow at the end. And you're like, I see how all of this was interconnected. So they are different, but I kept thinking that it was being paranormal because you kept seeing quote unquote visions of the guy in the plague mask, but really it was just it was Cademan just stalking yeah. her. Yeah, in his brother's. I thought she was like halluc, fully alive. Like, I thought, so I thought she was like infected. I thought she was hallucinating. I I thought that it was like the ghosts, like it would it was ghosts in the thing. No, but I, I thought she was like infected. especially when she saw the one in her room. I was like, is she like is this the doctor from like the ghost of the doctor in like the history she was reading? But nope, it was just just Cademan just stalking her Being and watching her sleep. Fucking weirdo. Yeah. I do actually let's talk about Spencer. I feel like so there's like moments where 
he's like involved in the plot all the way up until she gets drugged with the berries. Mm -hmm. She thinks it's Spencer, but it's actually not. It's her quote unquote dad, Spencer's yeah quote unquote dad too at that point. And then she like cuts her ties. Mm -hmm. And then he tries to make a move on her and she's like, whoa, I told you I'm not interested. And then, and then you don't really hear from him again until he finds that video of, of his dad, of his dad and, and then Mel killing that girl. Okay. Mel was like, that was just like a thing that, but we'll talk about that in a second, but let's talk about Spencer. I feel like a scene was cut. Probably this book is fucking. This book is long, but I feel like there had to have been a scene between her cutting Lila, cutting Spencer out of her life, basically, and him sending that video to Deverick. But I was like, there has to be a connecting scene here because I feel like I missed something and I bet you it was cut. Like, I bet you there was a scene in here or he potentially was more involved, but it was making the book too long. And I bet you like mm -hmm. some of that was cut out. Because it, it felt like he should have been, like, there, it felt like there was a connecting piece that wasn't there. That, like, the story still made sense without it, which is probably why they cut it. But it did feel like maybe there was supposed to be something there connecting the two things. Um, I mean, I didn't feel that, but. I did. I kept being like, well, wait, the video came from Spencer? I was like, but when did he get Spencer here? Spencer hated his dad. Yes. Okay, let's talk about that fucking teacher the other the woman teacher the woman teacher who was obsessed with she Deborah. was obsessed and literally like so she basically tries to get lila like expelled. expelled she does she does get her expelled and then because she wants a relationship with Deverick, and she saw that Deverick was and giving her special treatment. She keeps like, going like all the way until oh, she, she thinks she shows up at De so Deverick only owns this like fucking mansion on the that, island like is his dad's like it's gone through the family and she shows up at this mansion just because like i wasn't just quite sure how she ended up thinking like hey, he's gonna be here when he'd never lived in the house ever yeah but then she showed up and then here Cadman is like putting a sheet on her so that she doesn't get blood everywhere and he's she's like okay this is weird and i'm like bro you're going to die but she was like, yeah, and then she was like, when Lila showed up, and was like, that's not Deverick, like, and she's like, what do you mean? Yeah, she's like, well, and then Lila is like, and then you're you like, I'm not quite sure you're going to kill me, so I'm gonna sit over here. And she's like, she sees that it's about to happen, and this lady is just like sitting in this chair, being like, wow, this plastic sheet's weird. And I was like, you're going to die, like you're an idiot. I mean, but she Lila, doesn't die, but like, Lila also knows that like. She clues in a lot, like, like pretty she, quick. Pretty quick. One, she can tell Kadem and yeah, Deverick Cadman. apart. Cadman? Cadman. Cadman. Cad Cadman? Cadman. And Deverick are, like, apart. because And of... she knew that, like, she had she had time if, like, he wasn't going to do anything. If he wasn't going to do something to her, he wasn't going to do anything to her in the house. Yeah. So she she was like, I still have time to figure out what's fucking happening yeah. here. Cause yeah. He she was just like such a weird like villain in this book because you you see her become this villain and then it's like villain, 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 and then it just like she shows up at the house and they have that weird scene with the twin and then she's like on the side of the road and Devrick is like, What the fuck and like picks her up and then he i was like and it just seemed to like weirdly peter out yeah to like her not just not really being a villain her just being like kind of an idiot like and yeah. she just was like really misguided the whole time <laughs> yeah. but then also really conniving because she's the one that had all the original documents to prove wasn't that sent to her though no, she was part of the study. She was oh. at that when the study was happening. She, she was, was an assistant. She was she? an assistant and she was doing all of the like note taking for them and like organizing of files. She was a lab assistant because she was like a young student at the university at the time. But like it was so strange. I was like, 
I kept thinking she was going to be a villain, but at the end, you can't quite call her a villain because of the like the yeah. Stuff at the end. It was also, so weird. there's like parts of it that were just like you just like didn't understand. Like you understood her motives, but you also didn't understand her motives because like. You're like so you understood that she wanted more because they had they were like basically fuck buddies, but he had like a rule that don't, don't touch, touch me. me because he can't like, he basically can't feel his body. Yeah, and which is why he's trying to get the toxins. Um, and so he breaks it off with her when she tries to touch him, and then I don't know why she latches on to Lila because like so basically he gets like bulldozed to have her in his class. Yeah, by her. Yeah. And by the, the, the by the the one of the professors that sponsored her to get yeah, in something like that. But also because like her obviously her like essay matches what he did, and they were like, yeah, it makes sense. Um, and then she like latches on because she's like, you're giving like basically she's like, you you're must like him treatment. because she's getting special treatment, and he's I just mean, like she kind of was, she, well, she was, and- but not via him. And they did end up fucking, but it wasn't at the time because he honestly, like, could not care less about her at that point. Not, like, he he picked her out as an outlier, but not to the point where he was like, I'm going to fuck this girl. Like, it was just, like, yeah. Like, I, like, yeah, like she kind of made something she, like, she, out of nothing. Yeah. And then it. It just like spiraled in such a weird way because I didn't expect Mel to be a villain. Yeah. But really, all of what Mel was doing was her guilt manifesting because she's the one that basically killed that girl. Yeah. Who they blamed Devrick for killing. But she didn't feel like she had any remorse of killing that girl because she was about to kill Lila too. No. Because she knocked that girl upside the fucking head with a shovel with a shovel calls the dead the and the then they drop her in the fucking worm pit <laughs> my no they put her in the incinerator oh i thought they put her in the worm no pit. they put her in that like to, to incinerate I like to cremate bodies can you tell i read this book a while ago <laughs> and the part that gets you and this is so, like so well done by the author because she's like you're watching this video through Devrick's eyes the first time and he's basically describing this video in his head. Like, as you're watching it, you're watching mm-hmm. it through him. And then the video goes, and you're like, okay. Okay, so she hits her with the shovel. And you're like, oh, fuck. And you're like, okay. And then you see her, like, panic in the video. She calls somebody and is, like, pacing. And this girl's just, like, laying on the floor. The Like, the bad dad of Spencer. Dean. The and, Dean shows up. And Lila shows up says it's fine they make out yeah he sends her on her way and then he picks up the dead the, the girl tosses her in the like incinerator for like to cremate bodies closes the door starts it and then he, he's like standing there being like well this fucked went fucked sideways really fast and then her hand comes and touches the glass because she's still alive so he basically tossed her in alive to be burned alive and then he sees the hand and he's like oh fuck and he just like nope and he leaves yeah and it was so well done because you're seeing it all play out and you're like oh shit she's dead and then you realize she's not dead he killed her he tossed her in alive and saw her hand and then left her in there yeah. and it's just so you're like you're you're in the moment you're watching this video you're like Oh my fucking god! I the only other thing that I wasn't I was surprised that the bad guy was literally the bad guy in every single aspect. Like yeah. I thought these were two separate plot lines. No, they're but they were literally all the same one. Like the one villain was this the same villain for fucking everything. Yeah, he kidnapped the brother. He murdered her mom. He murdered those women. He murdered two other women. Falsified reports. And then had them framed. Actually, that's a lie. The twin brother framed them. By threatening Mel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the only part that I was like, uh, okay. Um, Actually, that goes into my... 
favorite part. The 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 bro fight at the end into like the hug and the like I miss you why didn't you come back or I was like you know what this is actually this is what I needed like this is actually that that's my favorite part is like them having the like legitimate fist fight into just like hugging it out yeah <laughs> after both of them had fucked up childhoods and like so much drama they're like we're still brothers yeah. <laughs> i was like this is that was my favorite part uh my favorite part was the scene so she's there in a scholarship yeah um and in order because the 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 stepdad is useless he's um, just an idiot he yeah. can't pay anything so in order to pay her sister's tuition her one of her her friend basically is like oh yeah I you should put videos up on this like website it's of, called like, like voyeur or something. yeah of, like it's basically just people masturbating in public in public and they're like you should just put a video up on on this Whatever. website and you can get a lot of money and she does it in class yeah so like because the more first, public it is yeah the, the, more, ri- the more risque yeah the more money you'll so get. So she's like in his midnight lab and like so his TA teaches his midnight lab. So at the beginning she's like kind of like, you know, she's kind of touching herself. She's like, "Oh yeah, you know, like" And then Derek like, and then he in. comes in and she was like, "Oh, this is I'm doing it come. for me. <laughs> this is doing it for me." And then he like so she she has her phone in between her knees and she's not like holding it with her hand. She's like it's in between her knees. So when he, like, she comes, she drops the phone, and he's like, are you recording this lesson? Because she's not supposed to because they all sign NDAs. Yeah, so then he's like, you either have to delete it in front of me or I'm taking your phone away. And she's like, well, you can take my phone away. And then, and then he watches And it. then he was like, what is she recording? I need to see what this video is. And he watches. And he watches. Her. And then he sends it to himself. And then he himself. sends it to himself. And then he finds it on the, like, website. Yeah. And he gets it taken down. Because he realizes he doesn't like the idea of anybody else watching her. Yeah. I did like his... He had the perfect amount of, like, possessive, but you're your own person. Like, I'm not going to control you, but you're fucking mine. Yeah. And it was, like, perfect. It was, like, not too much where he was, like, alpha hole. He definitely towed the line, but never mm-hmm. to the point where you were, like, that's too much. He was, like, just possessive enough without being like controlling and it yeah. was like a perfect like perfectly walked on that line yeah because even like the because when she so basically they end up she comes in comes up with a like thesis of yeah. the black rock in the island helps is basically like a it's, cure for this. Yeah, it's basically preventing people from getting infected. But and that's how the locals. That's how the locals, like in particular, in the the like natives the indigenous on, group, yeah, basically the natives on the island kept from getting infected. Yeah. was because they were using this rock for everything, for food, for tea, yeah, for like dental work. So she comes up with this theory, and she's kind of like breaking it down to him, and he's like, "Wow, that sounds that's like really good." He's like, "You should pursue that," and she's like, "Oh, you you don't want to just." you take don't get you don't want to take that and he's like no it's, it's your idea it's your idea like you should he also was like i also don't have any time to do that and my thing but you should do it and she was like oh okay and it was yeah it was it was good like i liked debrick as a hero like he was just possessive enough and just just morally gray enough that he just slowly murders people where he wasn't but but like but there was also like such a justification like he lets that prostitute go and then just happens to also then have Angelo dropped into his lap. Do we want to talk about the Angelo scene at the end? It's like pretty traumatic. It is pretty traumatic. Like, so basically she gets expelled and she has to go home. And her stepdad was renting out one of the rooms. And said, it their- was, and said Angelo wasn't staying in it, but he was. Yeah. And he basically tries to like mur- rape and murder her. Yeah. For her dad. Yeah. And then, because Deverick just, Dever- like, Deverick it all just no. happens. Because, like, Deverick finds out she's ex- been expelled. And then turns on to go get her. Because yeah. he's already on the mainland. Yeah. And then, so he, like, shows up. Like, it's, like, literally In right time. In the nick time. of time. Like, because like, she would have been, like, she was, like, she literally, was like, drugged. drugged. Like, a lot of drugs. And, like, he was about to drown her, was he not? No, he was about to, like, rape her. 
I'm pretty sure he was going to try to drown her, too. I thought they were in the bathroom. When no, it was in her room. But she, he killed her mom. Yeah. He showed up right at the end and murdered her mom. He made it look like a suicide. Yeah. And let the worms go down the drain so that there was no proof of the worm thing. Yeah. It was like a lot. I wasn't expecting it to ha- I was like, honestly. Like, I really didn't need that. Well, and so what happens is that as a reader, you're in Lila's point of view first. So you get Lila's point of view all the way through to her showing up at the house and getting cornered by Angelo. And you're like, oh, shit. And you yeah. you don't know what, what the fuck Deverick's doing because he's away on business, quote unquote. That's all she knows. Yeah. And then you flash to his POV where he's picking up this prostitute. He doesn't know what's happening. He gets a call at the end being like, she's been expelled. Like, she's been sent home. And he's like, give me the fucking address. Like, fuck you. I'm going to pick her up. Like, we're not doing this. Mm-hmm. And all you get is him receiving her address. And then it cuts back to her fighting, basically trying to fight Angela off from raping her. And you don't actually know if he's going to make it. Like, you just know that he is, like, you don't know how far the timeline has gone. Yeah. And whether this is happening simultaneously or whether this has happened later. So you you know he's going to show up, but you don't know when he's going to show up. It is, it is pretty perfectly timed. He shows up, like, nick of time. Like, yeah like like she's just like she has no she's mobility just about to in pass her body out. yeah but she's still conscious but yeah she's just starting to lose consciousness like he shows up literally in the nick of time and, and it is murders that guy and then his brother literally cuts his arms off and like that was yeah, a lot he... there's no way he murdered it and then kate him this is what happens when you don't read no so read she infected books. him with worms he cut his tongue out Oh. And then infected him with worms and was just like left him in one of the cells in his dad's house. Because his dad also has murder cells. Question mark? Old house, man. And then Cademan shows up and goes, Oh, look, you I brought was me looking for him. a gift. And then he murders him. Yeah. He tortures and murders him. And then she finds the tortured version of Angelo and is like, Oh my God, Deverick is capable of this. And she's like, half trying to like like i hated this guy but also like like, cutting off his arms is a little extreme yeah where she's like can i still love him knowing that he's capable of this but also this is a really bad guy and she basically comes to the conclusion that like yes she can love deverick and this guy deserved it Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's fine um okay what was your least favorite part um, I think my least favorite part was the amount of academic stuff in it. I understand that it's a dark academia, but like, I didn't give need me an example. I didn't need all the fucking science. I didn't need like them breaking down the like, like what she was learning in class or like oh, him doing all the research. Like you wanted I to be a little more vague. Yeah, I like I didn't need all that detail. Mm. And it was just like sometimes it just felt like it just kept going on about all the STEM stuff. And I was like, I literally the thing like, about I don't arc- give a shit. academia, like dark academia specifically, is they toe the line between like fantasy where they world build quite a bit. And yeah. they give you a lot of extra detail. This book definitely towed that line. But then again, like when we read Gothicana. That also towed the line. It gave you a lot less of the, like, actual academics, but she was, like, studying English. <laughs> like, it was different. But I just I just didn't need that, like... I I see what you're talking about, it just, though. It felt, like, a bit, like... I thought it was really fucking interesting, but, like... I didn't find it interesting. I was just, like, you could you could just be super vague with this, and I'd be, like, yeah. I, I thought it was interesting. Um, okay, Miley's hair part was the murder at the beginning because it was such a jarring scene. It's very graphic. To literally, like, the first scene, the first chapter is her mom trying to murder her trying sister. Trying to murder her sister. Her walking in, her basically then having to to defend her sister, herself, in, in the same in, time, trying this, like, to murder her mom because it becomes a, like, life or death, like, either I live or you live. And then the worms. And then you're like, and then it ends. And you're like, what? It was like, 
the thing is, is like, would I, would the scene be as like cinematic and like impactful later in the book? Maybe not. Like it does give you the impact that you want, but it was like a lot right at the beginning. Yeah. Because the rest of the book, I wouldn't say like that's probably the darkest it gets besides the Angelo attempted rape scene. Yeah. Like, it doesn't quite get that dark again. Even his, like, low, like, slow, drawn-out worm murder isn't quite as, like, jarring and, like, in-your-face graphic as that was. So it was definitely a lot. But I would say if you're reading this book, push through it. Like, read that scene, take a breath, but keep reading because the book does, like, it's, it's a good book. It does get better. Um, okay. Do you have anything else? Mm. Actually, can we go ahead? No, I was just going to be like, let me think. Let's talk about the ending. Is there a sequel? Okay. I was also on a runner up of worst, like least favorite part of like, so his brother, I don't understand how his brother can't become a teacher. His brother literally like dropped off the face of the earth at 16 how is he going to university? Money? I don't know. Whatever. So he, his brother ends up being a teacher. An at, English teacher at Breeze. At Breeze. Boarding school. Boarding school. And then she's like texting Lila being like, oh my God, this really cute Look at this professor. hot teacher. And, and at this point she hadn't, her sister hasn't met. Deverick. Deverick. So, and they're like identical twins, obviously. And so I was just like, I, I can, I can humor the age gap between Lila and Deverick. I can I can humor it. It's really pushing. I love an age gap, but this is really like pushing my limit. But it does make a little more sense from like a teacher teacher student perspective because he's a university teacher and she's a university student. Yeah, it like versus like, like the high she's school like still an student. she's still technically an adult. She's like a very young she's adult. She's an adult. still technically an adult, and. It's just like if they had a book, I don't know if I would read it because it's like she is 17. 17. Yeah, she's 17. She's 17. And he's like 35. I, yeah. That's pushing it. Although that's only a three year difference between Brie and Lila. I thought it was like ended up being like four or five years. No, it's actually not that many. But then when you think about if Lila is 16 when her mom dies... Because it's like four years, basically. She's like 16. Then her sister would have been like, what, 12, Mm -hmm. 13? That makes sense that she would have to then take care of her sister. Because the age, like, who you are at 16 and who you are at 13 are very different. Yeah. But, like, part of me is like, what the fuck? I need need to know. But I also agree because that that did jump into mind when, when that happened. And I was like, wait, but she's in high school. Yeah, that's a little red. And I'm like, did he seek out the sister on purpose? Also, he was just like it with Lila. He was just like, I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just keep you if you just if you want to leave, I'll take you with me. Yeah, and she was like, No, I'm okay. I'm yeah, good. thanks. <laughs> yeah, I did. I do also want to say like this was a pretty steamy book. Yeah. And condom watch. They wear condoms every fucking time. No questions asked. They just do it. Yeah, because he... Even there's even one time where they're in the car and he's like, wait, we need to wear a condom. Even though he thinks about it. About being like, well, or I could just impregnate her. And he's like, nah, let's use a condom. (laughs) Like, there's a moment. But, like, it was... It was good. I'm glad. Condom... The condom watch is a definite yes with a check mark. Um, okay, so then what would you say your rating of the book was? Give it a four. Okay, so I give it a four. And now that we've talked about it and I realize how many, like, how much came together with the plot and how, like, intricate the plot actually was, this is, I'd probably actually give this a five. Like, still too much, at, still too much science for me to be a five. Uh, no, I I would give this a five. Like I had this as a four originally, and I I think I'd actually give this a five after talking about it and realizing how good of a book this actually was. Like how much was put into this book that like checked the boxes that I really like. This is probably a five for me. Well, guys, we have the streak still runs. Lexi's recommendations far superior. It's 
almost like I probably told you. I think I pre- said I was reading this book on this podcast in our like, what are you reading currently? Oh, like weeks ago? Yeah. Maybe. Like Not weeks summer. ago when it came out in, in April. Mm, maybe. Um, okay, Steam. That was the only thing I... Would you give this a three? Probably a three. It's not super kinky. But it's steamy. But like, there is a, quite a few steam. the thing is, it's like, book is fucking huge. This book is huge. It's a very long book. So, like, obviously, there's going to be more steam in a 700-page book. That's true. Than, than there is going to be 200 and 300-page book. That's true. I Yeah, I'd give this a three. Um, okay, would you recommend this? Obviously. I mean, yes. And would I you think... reread this? I probably would spooky in spooky season. This is the perfect October book. And now that and our key is not on Kindle Unlimited anymore, and you can't yeah. buy it on Amazon. Um, this is gonna yeah, be you my also replacement. can't buy it on Amazon. That's true. It's gonna be my replacement. Um, and the cover was fucking gorgeous. The, so co- the co- like, cover like, is nice. It is. This is such a. It's so similar to Arcadia, but so different at the same different. time. That, like, this, if you liked Arcadia, I would say this is a great book for you, especially for October. Like, this is an October read for sure. And it also fit our theme of back to school because it, like, takes place literally back to school. Um, yeah, it actually finally hit the fucking timeline. Of September. <laughs> um, okay. Any last words? No, I don't think so. Actually, I had a, uh, like, a second place favorite scene and it was when she after the, the night they the first time they spend together where they don't like have penetrative sex but they like he goes down on her and she goes down on him mm-hmm. and then she leaves and she takes her pen her underwear off and puts her underwear in his in his pocket and is like panties are for the modest and just like leaves i was like that's perfect that was good that was my second favorite scene i have that in my notes that's definitely worth mentioning um okay otherwise do you have anything to say no um okay so then what's your current read we we really like jump around we we do this some weeks we don't do other weeks we keep forgetting um i've finally after months of being on the wait list i finally got theoretically yours i liked it. it once i started reading it i like plowed through the book yeah i got it i finally got it so i'm starting that it took me, I read it in less than a day. So I think you'll. I read Happy Place in less than a day. Really? Did you like it? I, I wasn't a huge fan of Happy Place. I've, I have had a lot of people. I've got on like Bookstagram. A lot of reviews have been very hit and miss. They're like, like, it's not, it's definitely not my favorite Emily Henry. No, I think Beach Read still. I slaps. haven't read it yet. Book Lovers is still my favorite, Emily Henry. But. Uh, it's not. Yeah, it's not my favorite. Like, I still read it within the day, but I definitely, like, I don't think I'd purchase it and go back oh, to it. Okay, that's good to know. I haven't read it yet. Um, what did I... What am I reading? You're reading. You're reading. Your good read says you're reading, like, ten books right now. I know. It's because I start them on Kindle, and then I'll read the first few chapters, and be like, I'm not in the mood for this. And then I just don't change it, and then I've got, like, a whole bunch of books. Um, I'm actually going to read that book that you... Um, that like blind date with a book that you gave me. Ooh, you should open it live. <laughs> I, that's what I'm gonna read after after our two books for this this cycle. I'll open it before the the beginning of next our next episode because fine. Um, Technically, you're not. That's not what you're currently reading. Then Liar. I mean, okay. <laughs> um. But I'm going to read that. So whatever that is, I'm going to read. Um, I, I actually, I just finished Practice Makes Perfect. By, it's the one with the flower girl. Like she's in like overalls on the co- cover and he's like a bodyguard with tattoos. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's like the second, it's, it's like a second book. It is the it? second book. Although they're kind of standalones. You don't really need to read the both. And it's closed door. <sighs> I did not expect it until I read it. And I was like, no <laughs> i didn't hear i in all the reviews i've seen i didn't i didn't hear that once That's because those everyone in the reviewing is probably likes chiclets it's it's closed door yeah no, it is banned. faded black it's actually okay it's not it's like yeah i i would it's but not there's quite no like masturbating in the middle class scene <laughs> no it's like not quite fade to black but it's like not but it's like it's closed door i hate those 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I'll take that off my list. Thanks. Yeah. I, I don't want to say don't read it, but like if that's what you're looking for, maybe not for you. Because I was kind of disappointed because I was like, oh, this would have been so good if mm-hmm. it just wasn't closed door. Um, anyway, uh, that's all I have for this week. That's all you have for this week. Yes. Um, next week we are going into October, which is monster romance. Monster. Our first book is such a fluff. And I kind of love it. It's like a very different tone than this yeah. book. They're like complete opposites from this book. So um, it'll be good. Um, we also have our event coming up. The romance panel is happening in October. So that will be more announced and so coming up on that. So if you've been following along on our Insta, I've posted a bit about that. Um, we will hopefully have a lineup posted pretty soon for who's going to be talking um book box is hope the pre-orders are starting in october so or november 1st i think is what i've set it at so definitely stay tuned because pre-orders will start to go live and those in this podcast will be the first to know when the pre-orders go live before anybody else because you're our original followers and other than that like rate review and subscribe to our podcast it's really helpful you can find us wherever you download your podcast or listen to your podcast. Our website is a great place to check out everything that we've got going on. And if you ever need to get in touch with us, Instagram is the place because that is where we are the most active. Um, we have a YouTube channel and a Patreon. We have all of the things. Everything's on the website. So check it out. Otherwise, we'll be back next week. Bye. Bye.